In this film I'm going to show you how to use the drafting palette. It's a very simple straightforward tool and it will save you a lot of time. It's also uh, one of the good reasons for getting into not only 3D but use, using the professional and the professional platinum versions. This is a tool that's not in deluxe. Uh, but as I often say, you know, if you can't afford the uh, you know, if the price for the latest professional platinum is a bit steep, buy a two-year-old professional platinum. It's a it's a much better idea than uh, get into deluxe because tools like this will save you a lot of time. It's also a good way of emphasising the uh, the reasons to to draw in 3D because this object here I've got in front of me is much quicker to draw in 3D and then turn it into 2D drawing than it would be to draw it and say three views in orthographic and then stick a line through it and do it in a section. If you draw the whole thing in 3D, the, the computer will work out the, your orthographic projection and your sections for you. So it's a drafting palette. Um, so it's just a usual, usual old sort of you know 3D shape, whatever. And we say we've got a main block here and here we've got some sort of handle. Perhaps you use the handle to put the block into place and then you take the handle away. So first of all we'll open the tool which is in, in 20 Pro Platinum which is what I'm using here in Tools, Palettes, Drafting. Left click. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this as a, an assembly as the main block here and that block there. So first of all I'm going to take a shot of the whole thing. So I'm going to select the whole thing up here where it says selection I'm going to I'm going to go up here I'm going to create a new one where it says assembly that's what it is and where it says R big red R that's for rename so I'm going to click onto that and as this view is all of it I'm going to call it all as this part is perhaps a bit extra that we might not want in the final drawing we may want to see it, but may want to see it off to one side or something. I'll create another bit. Create part assembly. It gives it a name here, you know, just a load of letters. I go R, and we call this uh, end bit. So we've chopped it up into two. Now. Also, what I've done here is I have made a uh, traditional viewport of it, and how to do that is shown in, in another video somewhere that I've made. So now I'm going to go from my model space to my paper space. Here I'm looking at a sheet of uh, A4 paper, and I want to bring in the part called All, and I want to bring in, say, Front Elevation. So I click on the front elevation, here's my preview. Now I can drag it in, but I always use the tool here which says insert into drawing. Click onto it, and that brings it in. Now you can see down at the bottom here, the scale here is 2, because I've had a little play around with it first before I made this film, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. But actually it defaults to 1, which means the thing comes in, well, the one, uh, 1 to 1, full size and the drawing here on my drawing would have been too big as you can see it just fills the paper up so what I would do is I would go to uh, my, my front elevation here which I was going to bring in bring in and where it says 1 see that's how it will look when it's defaulted you simply tab in there and I'll put uh, 0.2 which is equivalent to 1 to 5. The drawing freezes, but that's okay, you just left click and you un you release it, select the whole thing and put it where you want it. So there's your front elevation. Next minute, next thing you might want a plan, so here's the plan. Bring into the drawing. This time we've already set the scale, so it'll come out of the right scale. Now you can plonk this anywhere you like, but obviously you, you want it lined up under here. So if you come up and sort of creep up underneath it and go over that front elevation, it clicks onto it and you can now see that it's lined itself up. 
same with an end elevation I'm not sure if I'm getting the right one here I think that's probably okay I can't remember my first and third angles from school days anymore uh, or actually when I was after school but insert into drawing again I'll bring that out again if I line it up that's lined out for me now the this handle piece we might want that drawn on its own somewhere and that there was the end bit so maybe we want just this end bit say the uh, that end elevation there there it is bring into drawing there it is and again here it is and we can bring it along here this doesn't line up like the other one as you can see so we'd have to perhaps put a little construction line in but I could put that there and I can have a uh, oh, what else I can have any aspect of it I want if I just want a drawing of it over here that will line up now with that piece and we can have that as a separate part now you can also see we can have uh, three dimensional drawings of it so we'll have a, an isometric here just of that part if we click onto all it'll be the main part all and then the isometric whichever bit we want uh, so we'll have that piece in here bring that in uh, insert into drawing here it is I can put that there the other thing is we can uh, we can do a uh, as I say sections here's all our regular sections just giving straightforward horizontal and vertical sections through the through the center of the drawing or we can do a, a true shape so if I drew a, a line say through this part here I'll just draw an arbitrary way through I can here pick up my create by a line by view line because that's that's a view line which I've drawn so create by view line uh, the, the, the method now is really quite stri straightforward we've obviously got to say the object we want to uh, section which is that one the line we want to use because there could be more than one line it's that line and obviously we've got to say what side we want the drawing to be seen and then you think well where is it well it's up here aligned sectional view so click onto that it comes down here as our preview insert into drawing bring it out it comes out the same way now in the same way that these over here if we line it up if we bump it into the line it's going to line itself up you see and there's our sectional view um, so clearly we can you know if, if the assembly consisted of lots of bits we could have that all over it and it's very easy to create now the other thing is we can also combine this with traditional viewports you know, in, in another uh, film shows you how to do it so I can now bring in a viewport that I made earlier before I started making this viewport and I can draw that down here and I'll call that 3D and I put on go to um, I put some uh, some rendering on this so it uh, takes a, a second and that combined with the fact that this is pretty old computer now takes a second but generally speaking this shouldn't take so this should uh, pop in quite quickly there it is now this is a viewport just like in uh, other viewports so I can uh, left click onto it right click go to properties uh, have it in quality rendering that's going to take a second go to viewport turn off the visible box and say OK so now I've got a, um, a, a 3D rendered image which obviously would help uh, anybody who's going to make this or use explaining to him what it was to visualize what the thing was going to look like now as in viewports you know viewports look back at the model space so if we go back to model space if I edit this viewport so if I take out this one here when we go back uh, back to paper as you know it will update the paper space
there it is it's taken it out and also you'll see on the drafting palette it's updated that one as well I think if I remember correctly some of the earlier versions in the drafting palette this did not update in the drafting palette it certainly does in 20 uh, how far back that goes I'm not sure but I think if you get back as far as well just a couple back about 18 I don't think that does but you, that's something you'd have to check and again that's you know that's another reason for upgrading every year or every two years to uh, to take advantage of these uh, these little developments that are, that are extremely useful okay so just to remind you that drafting palette is under tools palettes drafting palette it's a nice little tool, easy to use, not difficult to understand, and that will print off very nicely. Okay, it's as simple as that, and I think we'll call it a day. Cheers.